Hello and welcome. You are watching Drinking About Birds, the show in which we explore depictions of birds on wine labels. And today we're getting started with this Chardonnay from Belverne in Sonoma County, California, which is illustrated with this beautiful red-tailed hawk. Now, if you don't know much about birds and you're interested in learning, I think red-tailed hawks are a great place to start because, first of all, they're a raptor, and who doesn't love raptors? Uh, secondly, they're probably the most widespread and abundant raptor that we have here in North America. Uh, they're found throughout North and Central America and the Caribbean, and uh, they're very tolerant of human activity, so you really don't have to go too far out of your way to find them. Um, I live in a very suburban community in western New York, and I can go out on a bike ride and see invariably at least two or three of them. And uh, I actually saw one this afternoon at the liquor store where I bought the wine. So, uh, yeah, they're definitely around. Uh, the question we're going to address here is, how do you know when you're looking at a red-tailed hawk? So, I know what you're going to say right away. It's a hawk and it has a red tail. And that is true. Um, <laughs> the red tail is a fantastic example of what we call a field mark. So field marks are visible characteristics that you can use to identify a species of bird. But field marks are really only useful when you're making an apples to apples comparison. So put, another, put it another way, uh, before the red tail can be useful, you first have to know that you're looking at a hawk. Um, so let's kind of get into that before we go into more specific field marks. Uh, the red-tailed hawk is a Budeo. Budeo is the name of the genus that it's in. Uh, it's also one of the major divisions among uh, the category of birds that we call raptors. Um, so these are birds of prey. Um, the word raptor uh, comes from a, a Latin word that literally means to grasp or to seize, uh, and that refers to how they capture prey. Um, so like all raptors, red-tailed hawks have these big muscular feet uh, with long, sharp talons that they use to catch prey. Uh, they also have a strongly hooked bill, which they use to tear prey into manageable chunks for easier ingestion. Uh, and most raptors, at least diurnal raptors, uh, find their prey visually, and so they have big forward set eyes that give them good binocular vision. And that also gives them this fierce gaze, which is probably a big part of why we find raptors so charismatic. Within raptors, buteos are typically going to be your classic uh, soaring hawks of open country. So they tend to have long, fairly broad wings, which are optimized for soaring, and they tend to have a fairly short tail, and that's best judged proportionally. So if you see a uh, a bird perched uh, with its wings folded, the feathers at the tips of the wings are going to uh, pretty closely approach the end of the tail feathers, if not extend beyond them. If the tail extends way beyond the end of the wings, then you're probably looking at an accipiter, which is a different group. Red tails are a pretty good sized buteo. They are smaller than like an eagle or a vulture but they're quite a bit bigger than a crow or a raven. I misspoke here. Red tails and ravens are actually about the same size, but they are both bigger than crows. So now you look at this bird and you can say, okay, that looks like a raptor, probably a buteo. Now what? So it does have the red tail. And I'm not going to lie, the red tail is an extremely useful field mark. It's also a great example of why you don't want to rely too heavily on just one field mark because any given field mark is usually not exclusive or unique to a given species, and it's probably not universal among members of that species. So wherever possible, you want to use a combination of different field marks if you really want to get a firm identification to species. The red tail, when it's there, is a very useful field mark, but it comes with some major caveats. First of all, it's very much an adult characteristic. So red tails are born or hatch in early to mid-summer. For the first year of their life, they do not have a red tail. Juvenile red tails have kind of a pale brown tail with many thin dark bands running laterally across it. 
uh, they start getting the adult tail feathers in the fall of their second year. So for the first year of life, they don't have a red tail. That's caveat number one. Caveat number two, it's not always going to look like this. So we are looking at this red tail from underneath. And the red on the tail feathers is really only present on the top surface of the feathers. From underneath, those feathers are going to look mostly whitish. Um, if the bird is backlit, which they often are because you often see them soaring, you can still often see kind of a reddish wash coming through, uh, and that can be enough, but it's not always going to be visible. Um, one easy way to look for it is red tails when they're flying, uh, they're often soaring in big lazy circles and they bank into the turns. And so when the bird is flying away from you and then it starts to turn back towards you, that's when you're going to see the red tail because they're going to be leaning towards you. Uh, and when you do see the red tail like that, it really pops. It's very vivid. You can pick it out from a mile away in good light, but it's not always super obvious. So uh, just something to use with caution. And like I said, it's always better to use a combination of field marks whenever possible. So let's get into some other ones with red tails. First of all, you see on the leading edge of the underside of the wing, they have this dark patch. Those are known as patagial bars or patagial marks. Those should be visible on a red tail of any age, juvenile or adult. Secondly, uh, it's not super visible on the label, but it can be also be difficult to see in real life. They have a band of dark streaks or speckles on the belly. That's appropriately known as a belly band. I like to think of it as a cummerbund, but uh, that's a really useful one and that should be visible on any age bird as well. Uh, on the trailing edge of the wing, they have this dark band. That's really more of an adult characteristic as well. It's still maybe present in juveniles, but it's not as distinct. Um, yeah. Red tails, you cannot tell male and female red tailed hawks apart based on color or plumage. They are not uh, sexually dimorphic with respect to plumage. And that's true of most raptors, really. Um, like most raptors, they are dimorphic with respect to size, so female red tails are significantly larger than males. Um, that's a tricky one to apply in the field, unless you have two birds sitting right next to each other and you get a really good look at them. If you do have two birds sitting right next to each other, they are probably members of a mated pair, so that's when sex is most relevant, because you want to know, you know which one is the male and which one is the female, but it can still be difficult to judge. And if you're only looking at one bird, it's next to useless because it's like bigger or smaller relative to what. Another complicating factor in terms of ID is that there are a number of subspecies of red-tailed hawks and they occur in various color morphs from light to dark. Um, if you're in the eastern U.S., which means anywhere east of the Rocky Mountains, it's pretty easy. Uh, there's one eastern subspecies and they're pretty much all light morph birds which means they look more or less like this. If you are west of the Rockies then you have the western or caloris subspecies which occurs in light, intermediate, and dark color morphs with intergrading between them. And what a dark morph means is that all of these field marks like the patagial bars and the belly band and the dark trailing edge on the wing, all of those are still there, and the dark portions are in fact darker, but the base color is darker as well, and so they can be harder to pick out in a dark morph bird. Um, most intermediate and dark morph birds will still have the red tail as adults, uh, and you can still use the field marks, but it's not gonna look exactly like this. So it's just kind of an additional complicating factor. Uh, Red-tailed hawks are very distinctive vocally, so uh, they have one of the most recognizable bird calls in existence, and it's the classic raptor call. It's used universally in TV, movies, video games. Anytime they want to convey a sense of wilderness, they will often use a red-tailed hawk call, even in places where it's geographically inappropriate, even in cases where the bird on camera is not remotely a red-tailed hawk. Um, they'll often edit in the call, um, even if you're looking at like a bald eagle, because bald eagles don't sound as cool. 
Um, the red-tailed hawk call is a hoarse descending scream. I'm going to try and find a recorded example so I don't try to imitate it. Um, and I'll try to edit that in here. Yeah, there you go. So, a little bit about the ecology of the species. Um, so red-tailed hawks, one of the things that makes them easy to find is that not only are they very tolerant of human activity, they tend to be pretty conspicuous when they are present. So they're known as a sit and wait predator, which means they like to find an elevated perch that gives them a good view of surrounding land. And they will just hang out there for hours on end uh, looking for prey. And prey, in the case of red tails, is mostly going to be small and medium sized mammals. So mice up to maybe rabbits, but they're pretty versatile. They will eat a lot of reptiles, especially snakes. Uh, they'll eat other birds, including a lot of ground dwelling birds like uh, quail or doves. There are some populations of red tails that are known to catch bats out of the air. So a uh, very versatile predator and that's part of what allows them to be so widespread within North America because they're not dependent on any one food source. They're uh, very much a generalist in terms of prey. And uh, yeah, in terms of habitat, they are very generalist as well. Basically all they need is elevated perches and a certain amount of open space. They don't really like super dense forest and they don't really like super open areas without any tall structures at all but anywhere between those two extremes you will probably find red-tailed hawks. Red tails are a partial intermediate distance migrant which means some individuals migrate and others stay in the same area year-round. The ones that migrate are generally birds that are living in northerly latitudes so in the northern US or Canada and when they do migrate, they're not migrating like to South America. They're migrating maybe a few hundred miles south to where it's a little warmer and there's a little more food to go around. So there are plenty of red tails that live in cold climates that just hang out year round. And so uh, you can see them pretty much any time of year if you live most places in the U.S. I haven't said too much about the wine yet, uh, and that's partly because these are not so much wine reviews as a convenient excuse to drink a lot of wine while I talk about birds. Um, I will say as Chardonnay go, I like this one. The price point is a little higher than I would normally spend if I was just buying wine for myself, but if you have a need for a modestly priced Chardonnay, I think you could do a lot worse. Um, it is apparently an oaked Chardonnay, which I didn't get much of. I taste a lot of uh, tart fruit flavors and kind of minerally flavors, but I don't have a great palate for white wine in general, so I don't want to speak from a place of ignorance. Um, this winery makes kind of a big deal out of their slogan, Forever Wild, which I thought was kind of a fun uh, contrast with a very human tolerant species that you can see in like the parking lot of a liquor store but apparently the Forever Wild slogan refers to a chunk of the vineyard property that has been set aside as a permanent nature preserve, and they have actually uploaded some videos to YouTube that you can go and check out where uh, they set up game, uh, trail cameras around the property, and so you can watch the videos and see uh, foxes and coyotes and things running around. I should have mentioned a uh, part of how you know that this is a red-tailed hawk is that they identify it as such on the rear label. Uh, they say Belverne began making wine in 1972, and in tribute we have maintained the majestic red-tailed hawk and the Anglo-French name that defines the beauty of the site as a village of trees. Um, they also uh, <laughs> suggest serving it with a grilled herb-crusted halibut, which is very specific, I thought. But it's helpful if you want to make like the perfect meal with the wine paired with it. Um, I also want to take this opportunity to say that, you know, human tolerant species, they're not the embodiment of untrammeled wilderness, but they're still very cool. And we should go out of our way to appreciate them because it's wildlife that comes to you. You can really get to know these species intimately. 
and uh, particularly with raptors and other species that form stable territories and maintain them year-round, you can actually get to know them as individuals, which is uh, an extra level of appreciation. And uh, I will say this is not the last raptor that we will cover, because raptors are very, very well represented on wine labels. And uh, yeah, we'll get into kites and exhibitors and eagles and owls. Owls are extremely common on wine labels, so we'll get into all that good stuff in later episodes. But yeah, that's about all I had to say, so thank you for watching. Again, my name is Zach, and this has been Drinking About Birds, and uh, I hope to see you next time.